Hello everyone and welcome to Quintet of the Americas videos part two, the double reeds. The double reeds being part of the woodwind family of instruments. At the end of this video, again, you're going to have a chance to play along with some music that we've already made. So you can bring your homemade instruments to this video as well. We are going to start out with Sasha taking you on a journey and she's going to explain where she gets the materials for making the reed that she needs to make a sound on her bassoon. Have fun. Hi, good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about bassoon and how bassoons make sound. Now musical instruments require a vibration of some sort and the bassoon's vibration is different from the flute, from the French horn, and from the clarinet. It's similar to the oboe, but we're going to talk about double reeds. So I've invited you to the yard today. We're going to look at the plant from which reeds are derived. So we're walking this way. And on the way there, I notice that some fruit is blooming on this tree. Can any of you guess what kind of fruit this might be? Hmm, it's small and green, but it won't always be that way. Here's an even smaller one. This is a lemon tree. And lemons and other citrus fruit usually don't bloom until the winter months. So it will take all year, it's March now, and these will not be yellow and ready to eat until around November. So anyway, oh, and here we go. Just on our way to the cane plant. Uh, this is a palmetto leaf. Palmettos you'll see all over the place in Florida. But on this exact leaf, we have a wasp nest. And this is where wasps lay their eggs in each one of these little like honeycomb sort of structures. Uh, this is empty, nobody's home, so it's safe to touch. Um, all right, but we are going to a cane plant. Now this beautiful plant right here, the white and green striped leaves, this is called Arundo Donax. And it's actually a weed in a lot of places, but it's hollow like bamboo. And this is the plant from which we make our reeds. So we can't use it when it's green like this. We have to wait for it to dry out. And what that looks like, I've taken a piece that dried from last season and he's a little hairy. So let me take the part I wanna show you. And we can just break it. Do you see how dry this is? Right, it's so dry that we just lost part of it. But we shuck it as though it were corn. And this is the material from which it's derived. So I would cut this down and split it and turn it into a reed. You can see here maybe it's a crude cut, but it's hollow inside for the, for the most part. It's joined at these sections. So this is the plant that I'm gonna make my reed from. Now to watch me make a reed would take a very long time. So I'm gonna skip ahead and show you what a finished reed looks like. So once I tie two pieces of cane together, I'll tie up the bottom with string, any color. I like to change it up sometimes if I, if I feel like I want a festive reed. And I secure it with some wires so they don't slip away. And this is two pieces of cane tied together. Now the vibration happens when air passes from the flat end to the round end. And I want the air to go in this end and it comes out of here and goes into the bassoon, which I'll show you in a moment. So when this vibrates, these two blades go up and down. And this is actually a tiny musical instrument in and of itself. So I'm going to pull air through the back to show you what this looks like when it's being played, but because if I played it in the front, I'd be hiding what's happening here. So here's what the front of the blades look like. That's what's happening to the reed when it's inside my mouth and I'm playing. And this is the vibration.
Do you see that these move, the top and the bottom ones move? Now, if I put it in my mouth, I can control the pitch. I can make it play high and I can make it play low. It doesn't have a very big range and it kind of sounds like a party favor, but that's okay because that will change once it's on the bassoon. But I can, it has enough of a range that I can play some small songs on it. So uh, if any of you have any birthdays coming up, you might recognize this song. bassoon, both double reeds, are closely related, again, because of how they get their sound. Sasha is going to show you more about the bassoon now. I would like to show you a very special instrument. It's called the bassoon. Now, I didn't take it out because I want you to see how it's assembled. There are a lot of small parts that go together, and they all live in here when I don't have the instrument out playing. So first, I'm gonna open the top of the case and see what I might need in here. Now this, that's a cloth for cleaning. This looks like a belt, but actually it's a seat strap. And this is going to be what holds my instrument. So for now, I'm gonna put that on a chair and we'll get back to that later. This is a case that holds reeds. When we looked at a reed a little bit earlier, well, this is where they live, so they can travel safely in my case and not get injured because they are actually very fragile. So we'll use that in a minute. But now let's open this up together and let's look inside. All right, so in inside this case, we have a couple of parts. This is the boot joint and it's called the boot joint because it goes on the very bottom of the instruments and if you look at the top there are two holes so we're going to put two pieces a smaller piece and a larger piece in here now before i put it all together the boot has a u shape at the bottom so this is connected when air goes in here it goes all the way down the instrument in this U-tube. It's called that because it's shaped like a U, not the video station, and up through the bigger side of the instrument. So the next joint is called the wing joint or the tenor joint. And it's called this because it looks like a wing on an ant, on a bird, on a dove. And that fits right here in the small hole of the boot. And next is the bass joint for the long joint and it makes the instrument even taller. And finally we have the bell. Okay which goes up here on the top. Now there's another piece that we use to connect the reed with this instrument, and it's a metal piece called a vocal. And there's a small hole right here where the vocal fits. So now I've put one, two, three, four, five pieces together. I'm gonna add the reed and that's going to make six pieces. Now the sound, what I showed you at the top of the bell, now it's going to go in the vocal. It's going to go down the wing joint, down the bell, sorry, down the boot, back up the boot, back through the long joint, and up through the bell. So that is a lot of air, and it's actually a long, way to put the air into the instrument. So you have to use a lot of air to play this instrument. 
Now, actually, only a couple of only a couple of low notes come out of here, but for our purposes, we're gonna say that it's this long to get out the lowest notes. Now, since this instrument is heavy, it has a lot of metal on it, it would be um, it would be too heavy to hold without assistance for too long. So that's where the seat strap comes in. This strap that I pulled out earlier, that looks like a belt, it holds the instrument for me on the side of the chair and just buckle it in. And that takes a lot of the weight off of my hands. So now I'm gonna take the reed out of its case. And put it on the end of the instrument. Now, do you remember what this sounded like alone? It sounded kind of like a party, a party toy. But as soon as I put it on the instrument, we get the sound of the full instrument and this just vibrates so that we can make sound with this whole instrument. So the bassoon has the word bass in the sound and bass is the lower register. And so the bassoon likes to play lower bass register. So if I were gonna play a bass line on bassoon, it would sound something like, that's an example of a bass line. Now the next register up is a tenor register and the bassoon loves to play there as well. It's a very songful, lyrical sort of register. up in a tenor register and I can respond uh, with a lower answer. <laughs> Meanwhile the bass line would be playing. person right now. I really do because it's fun to hear this in person and to hear it close up. But something we get to do like this is something that um, we wouldn't be able to do if we were in person. I would like to take all the parts from the Lion King song that I just uh, that I just played and put them together for bassoon. Uh, so if I were there in person I could only do them one at a time like this but I have put them all together in a recording and I would like to play for you. Uh, just can't wait to be king playing all the parts on bassoon because I like to say what's better than one bassoon is two bassoons. What's better than two bassoons, three bassoons and so forth. So there are eight different parts for this song and, uh, and I'm gonna put them all together for you now. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> going to share his oboe with you. Hi everyone, my name is Matt and I'm here to tell you about the musical instrument that I play. I'm a professional musician in New York City 
and I'm here to talk to all of you about the sound of a very special instrument called a woodwind. It, you play the woodwind instrument by blowing air into something that vibrates and it produces a sound. This instrument, this woodwind instrument is in this case right here. So I'm gonna take it out of the case. It comes in three parts. There's a bell. There's a middle section and the bell goes to it. And then there's the top part. It comes in three parts. The oboe has what's known as a conical shape. In other words, it's very small at the top and it gradually gets bigger. And you spell the oboe O-B-O-E. Now it has one more part to it. And that is the reed. And I'm going to show you what a reed is. It comes in a case. I have a few of them. I'm going to moisten it in my mouth. And the reed sounds like this. Which is a crow. And my friend who's busy recording this, his name is Bert, he makes a crow sound. Tell us what a crow sounds like, Bert. <coughs> so the, my reed made out of two pieces of wood that are folded together. It's, can you see that little hole in the top? That's what I blow the air through. No, no. Okay, well maybe we can't see the reed in that way it blows the air through but it does make that sound. And watch what happens when I put the reed into the oboe. There are double reed instruments like mine all over the world, and the instruments reach back to about 2,000 years. So people were playing instruments like this long before this instrument was made. My oboe was made in France, and uh, there are oboe players all over the world. We play mostly in symphony orchestras, but we also play chamber music. And I'm a member of a group called Quintet of the Americas, which has oboe, flute, clarinet, bassoon, and French horn. So the oboe comes with lots of what we call keys. And these keys cover holes that are underneath this certain key. So underneath this key is a hole. The instrument, if we were to take all of these keys off, all this silver stuff off, be full of holes throughout it. So this is what the oboe sounds like. And we tune the orchestra we to the orchestra to an A. And here's the full range of the oboe from a low B flat to a high F. So we go from low to high in the notes. The instrument that I'm holding here is a double reed instrument called the English horn, or in French, the cor anglais. Cor meaning horn, and anglais meaning angled. So it has a piece at the top that bends a little bit so that I can play it. I use a double reed, meaning that I have two pieces of wood that vibrate together and make this sound. And then when I 
attach it to the English horn via this metal piece, this instrument is uh, complete in the way it will vibrate. As you may know, the other instrument related to this is the oboe, which I also play, and it's much shorter. The oboe is, English horn is longer, and because it's longer, it makes a deeper sound. So, I need to have my reed wet, and let me place a couple of notes on this. So as you can tell, it has kind of a deep sound. Here's the lowest note I can play. Its instrument, the oboe, by comparison, has a higher sound. Let me play a little bit on it. As you can hear, it makes a much higher sound. They're both made from a kinds of wood. This one from Grenadilla, uh, an African wood. And this is from a violet wood tree. It doesn't have violets, the flower violets on it, but I'm told that when it's cut fresh from the forest, it has the smell of violets. So we have the English horn and the oboe, both members of the double reed family the oboe plays high, the English horn plays lower. Have a great day. This is a piece from Colombia by Jorge Olayo Munoz called Mañanita. I hope you have fun playing along with us on this piece. <laughs>
Thank you.